Hey there, everybody. Who's ready to make a flip cup acrylic painting? I've got an eight by eight canvas here. I've put some blue tape and uh, thumbtacks on the back. The, th the thumbtacks are for holding it up off of the surface so you can pick it up easily. The blue tape is to limit the amount of paint mess that gets on the back. Flip cups are a messy technique, so I've used tape on the back. Okay, so my colors, I'm doing Earth Tones colors. This is part of my 31 paintings for the New Year series. Got to figure out if I'm keeping that title exactly or if I'm changing that title. Um, anyway, so I've got Earth Tones colors. I have this metallic copper. I have metallic gold. Burnt umber, which is a nice dark brown. Green oxide. And some white house paint. So those are my five colors. My flip cup today, I've got a five ounce cup and I'm doing a flip cup without silicone. This is just gonna be a straight flip cup to show you what it looks like if you don't use silicone oil to make cells. All right, so this is an eight by eight inch canvas. Uh, a good rule of thumb for mixing paint and figuring out how much paint you need is for each four by four square, which is 16 square inches, you need about one ounce of paint. So an eight by eight is very easy because it's four, four inch by four inch squares. So you need about four ounces of paint. I'm gonna put about four and a half ounces into this five ounce cup because it never hurts to have a little bit extra paint. Okay, let's layer it up. So there's a lot of ways that you can put paint into the cup for a flip cup, but um, one of the best ways is just to basically layer them. Instead of trying to get them all mixed in the cup, they're gonna mix when they come out. Just put them in in layers. So my paints here are not in the order that I'm putting them in. I think I'm gonna do some green oxide first, and then some of this um, brown. So I'm just kind of stacking them on top of each other. And then I'll do some metallic copper. And then some white. And then some gold, metallic gold. Okay, so that's about half the paint I need. You can see it's coming about a third of the way up the cup. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing over again. Green. Brown. Copper. White. And then gold. And I can't tell if I have quite four ounces of paint, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the green and a little bit more of the brown to the top, just to make sure I have plenty of those because I want those two colors to be prominent. Okay, so I think this is about four ounces. You can see I've got some layers going on. The layers, the reason that I like layering for a flip cup is because then you know that you're gonna have some of those colors that come out solid. If you try to really mix it crazily in the cup, they might just go runny when you pour it out on the canvas. Okay, so time to get it flipped. Okay, so right now my cup's just right here in the middle of the canvas. When you do a flip cup, you can just pick straight up or you can sort of pull it really fast as you flip it. And that's what I'm gonna try to do here since I don't have silicone. So I'm not gonna be getting lots of bubbles. I want some movement from the cup itself. So I'm gonna push this over to one corner and I'm going to try to pull it fast. And we'll see how that works. Okay, so we've given it just, just a minute for the paint to kind of flow down. And um, let's pick up this cup and 
see how it works. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Whoa. Okay, so I got the drag. So I'm gonna take my leftover paint and put it here on the corners just because the corners are the hardest parts to cover. I've got a kitchen torch here. I'm just gonna see if I can pull up any air bubbles, see if I can get some cells. So do you see the gold is making some beautiful cells here already? The rest of the colors aren't making cell reactions quite yet. So it's time to put my gloves on and go ahead and tilt it. All right, time for the messy part. So I'm just gonna start kind of moving it gently Take it over one corner and then quickly back across. And I'll take it over this corner and back. And now back. I'll turn it so that you can see, though I usually don't do that. Usually I just hold it one direction. You see that stripe across? That's when I picked up the cup. I don't like that. I'm going to take it off really quick. Okay. One more corner to cover. Let me quickly torch again. See if I can bring up some more bubbles before I stretch it the last, last bit. Okay, there's some, there's some air bubbles popping up. So now as I stretch this, the last corner, those may form cells of their own. And back up. Okay, so we've covered all the corners. I'm gonna to torch one more time, just to see if I can get anything else up. And then I need to figure out my final, uh, how, how it's all gonna, oh, what do you call it? The layout, get it to shift the way that I want it to be. So one more torch. Okay, if you don't have a torch, it's all right. You can still get great results. The torch can just help pop air bubbles, which creates more cells if you don't want to use silicone. Okay, so I don't love the green over here. So I'm gonna take it that way to... So I'm bringing the weight of the paint back to the middle of the canvas from where it had been and then shifting it. I don't wanna stretch out the lacing and the cells that I have too much. So if you slowly move it back and forth, it's like you're walking the paint, you know, one foot at a time. Okay, got that corner covered. And now I can walk it back to get it looking the way I want it. I like that a lot. Let me take off these gloves before I drip paint everywhere. And then, okay. So the gold is right through the middle, that's beautiful. And then we've got green, white, and over here brown. And then underneath here, we've got that copper which you can't really see, it just looks kind of pinkish. But it's a beautiful S shape that I've got there. I think that's because I dragged it diagonally. Okay, and it looks like all the corners are covered. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit extra here, just to cover that. And add a little bit here, because the corners are the hardest, hardest places to cover.
Okay. The last step is to take a popsicle stick and run it under the edge of your canvas to knock down those drips that are forming. That way you won't get the messy lumps on the underside of your canvas. Also, uh, it will help your paint not pull, pull more paint down from the top of the canvas down off the sides. Okay, didn't quite get that. There we go. Let me take you in for a quick close up. So those round cells I think were caused by air bubbles. And then the ones that look more like lace were caused by the paint actually reacting with the other paints. So metallic gold, that's a very reactive paint, which is why you get this beautiful lace effect. Well, thanks for painting with me, and I hope this gives you some good uh, inspiration to do your own flip cup without silicone. See you for the next one. Bye.